Hey guys, this is Denise again, back with a new video on how to calm a crying baby and to demonstrate the five S's and how to put a baby down to sleep without waking them up. So, stay tuned. baby is born, they really want to be back in mom's tummy. So this is called the fourth trimester, which is called the five S's, how to calm a crying baby down. So this is number one, is the swaddle. That's the first S of the five. So how to swaddle a baby. You want to take a blanket that it needs to have some stretch and some give. So we're going to see, but this baby is almost nine pounds, so we don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> so you take a baby, and uh-huh. And this is great for when daddy doesn't know what to do and mama's taking a shower and needs to calm him down. So you're going to have a flap down and the ears are going to go below the lines. And you're going to use the abbreviation doo-doo. Down, over, down, over. I call it Denise's doo-doo. <laughs> so hands, I put them pretty close because they want them by their face anyways. And I go over and I hold it tight and you tuck, tuck in. And you see I use my form and that's already over. Feet are up, if the feet are not up you go Tickle them and you would go up and you go over the shoulder, tuck, tuck, tuck. Arms are down, blankets down, it almost looks like an X. Take your hand here and you hook it and you bring it around <laughs> and you tuck it under so it gives them a little bobble head help. Okay, that's the first of the five S's. The second thing is they want to be back in mom's tummy. So you want them on their tummy. They want to be on their side. They like to be on their side. If they're gassy, you do better on your side. You don't do better on your back. When he was in her tummy, she swayed back and forth. The second one is on the side. The third one is to sway back and forth. So the fourth one would be the shush sound. And you would just hold a baby and go After you've done the four S's, if that doesn't work how to calm a baby, then you want to do the fifth S, and that would be something to suck. So if a pacifier has a string on it, they have a chance of choking, and as well if it has a little stuffed animal on it, that's no way you could keep that clean and that dust will go in their mouths and your pediatricians will not like that. So you can put it low underneath the mouth. These nooks are really good. So if you put it in their mouth, they'll suck and you can feel them sucking. It also kind of helps if they're kind of trying to gum to get new teeth. Also, they have this little tap back here. If they're asleep, you can lightly put that blanket over it and it'll hold it in place. So say for instance, it's time to go to bed and we want to put him down, but he's not ready. So we're going to sit down. And what you would do is, I call it the bobblehead lotion. He's been bobbleheading for nine months and he doesn't want to stop. So this is a quick little way if you're wanting to rock him. He wants to be on his side again. You gotta, actually, it's the side that he likes best. So he may be the right or left and you just don't know. So you would take him and you would hold him and just kind of do a little bobblehead motion. I'm not shaking, I'm not jerking. I'm just trying to put him down to sleep. I wouldn't do this constantly because he's going to go, oh, I want it. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be used to it. So just enough to calm him down to go to bed. So now it's time to go to bed. So we're going to go to our baby bed or our bassinet. And it is true, every time you put a baby down, back is best. But they do need tummy time and side time as well. But if you put a baby flat on their back, what they do is they have a startle reflex and they will take a big breath and they go and they'll wake up so they don't have, they don't have that choking sensation so i put a baby down on their side and i grab their bulb syringe which is let's see it's right over there and i kind of actually tilt the bed up a little bit and tip, especially if they just got finished eating about 20 30 minutes and you take the bulb syringe that the hospital gives you or the one you have at home and i call it also the door stopper Put it right there. So I've laid him down on his side, but he's not gonna, I'm, as long as you're in the room or he's awake, you're awake, he can be on his side. So I would take a blanket or mom's gown that's been maybe in the dryer and smells like mom. She took it off last night. It's got her smell. It's all about tricking your children. It starts at birth and then it just keeps going <laughs> and going and going. So you roll this up. And so you can have all those cute things that they have and everything, but just a thin, simple gown, a t-shirt, something that's got her smell on it, and turn it and put it in the dryer for a minute, keeps it warm. 
You can roll them on their, now it's time to roll them on his back. And then you can still always have the bulb syringe around just in case he chokes and he's flat on his back and back is best. But try not to put him right there because he'll jump up and do the startle reflex. And that's how to calm a crying baby when that is like. Well, I realized when I was doing the video at the hospital of the five S's, it was one, kind of hard to hear me, and two, I kind of forgot some few little details. So I just wanted to add to that video. So here it goes. So the five S's really came from, and when I learned in, as an educator from Harvey Carp, we were taught this, and there's these are tons of videos online, YouTube even has them for free now, and it's really a guide considered the fourth trimester and how to calm a crying baby, which leads to the five S's, which we'll get to. Most of his practices still today are very true. There is some controversy with the swaddle technique, specifically not having the blanket too close to their mouth so they can suffocate as well as now we're learning, you know, minimum hats, no mittens, pacifiers with, you know, ribbons or duct animals. We try to keep those away to help them not suffocate. The five S's, most important thing is that we are trying to prevent you from not shaking your baby and losing your mind. Moms usually have no problem with calming a baby. They do skin to skin, they'll breastfeed, the baby knows them. What it's really for, in my opinion, is for the dads or your, the grandparents, people that are trying to help you so you can get that two or three hour nap. So the fourth trimester, like I said, is really for those dads and family members trying to help you. The first S is the swaddle. And we will talk about that. I've got me a little dummy right here to help. But on um, the video at the hospital, I show it as well. With the swaddle technique, you want really a very thin blanket, a muslin blanket, or an actual swaddle. We do not, we want it below the shoulders, not close to the chin, not where they can bend down and can breathe it up. So when you do have it, you want it tight and bitted and no fuzzies, no stuffed animals, things like that around them as well. So let's get started and I will show you how to swaddle. Hey guys, so this is how I would swaddle a baby. Of course, this baby is not crying and it's a lot easier, but with practice, you will be able to do this. So what I do is I take a very fitted blanket that is, doesn't have any fuzz on it, and I'm gonna fold it over. I put their head just below, ears below the line, and I use abbreviation doo-doo, down, over, down, over. So he uses D-U, D-U, down, up, down, up, but anyhow, basically the same thing. That's just how I remember it as a nurse. So I know they say put the arms down, but when you do that, they get mad and they just want them up anyway. So I kind of bend them close to their face. If they're wanting to feed, if you have their hands down, they're gonna get mad. Their hands are cues to help them learn how to eat and calm themselves down. So if you take that away from them, they're just gonna get more mad. So I actually put them close to their face. So put their arms up and I bring the blanket down and I hold it in place and I go tuck, 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 just like that, okay? So they're used to their feet being curled up and I put them up. Unless they don't like it, then I'll leave it down. But that's between you and your baby. You'll know what they like within a couple of days. So if you can, you wanna tickle them, tickle their feet, they'll bend their legs. And you wanna go up and go over the shoulder. And I just tuck, tuck, tuck again. And you'll notice I never really let my forearm go because if you do, they're gonna bust out of it. So this looks like an X right now. The next arm. It's already down, so blanket's down, and it looks like an X again, and I take my hand here, and I grab this side, and I hook it, I bring it around, and I actually tuck it up underneath the back of their head, so it gives them kind of a support so they don't bow ahead so much. And then you can like bring it down some, so it is away from their face, and it's very fitted. Very few babies that I have ever swaddled has been able to get out of this. This does take practice, but you have time. So watch videos and practice over and over again. A lot of times my dads at the hospital are way better than moms because moms are just going straight to the breast and they're giving them back to dads. And so my dads are the ones I would say I recommend watching this part of the video to kind of help them. 
Okay, guys? So, the first one is the swaddle. The second one is you want thigh, stomach, or skin to skin. So when they were in your tummy, they were on their side. You swayed them back and forth. When you're breastfeeding, they're on their side usually. So what you can do, dads, really, you could do what I call a reverse football and hold them like a football underneath your arm and you can sway them back and forth. And dads are usually really comfortable with this because they feel control. When they give you a baby, they just, they don't know what to do and they're very afraid of it. So if you can support their head with hand right here and one around their ear and let them hold it like they would, you know, like the Heisman Trophy, you know, like they're running for a field goal. This will make them more comfortable and you automatically want to sway back and forth whenever you are picking them up. If this doesn't work, we can do little tummy time and have them be comfortable as well as we can go skin to skin. Other thing is what we all do automatically from your great grandmothers till current time is wish we shush. Babies are used to hearing that deep shush sound in your stomach and you're thinking, oh my gosh, it's so loud. Well, in the first few months that this the five S's on how to calm a crying baby work. It's really, like I said, the fourth trimester. It only works for about three months. Their ears are kind of filled with water. Now they will usually pass their hearing test and things like that, but it's real muffled sound. So my recommendation, if you can't shh really deep, try and get dad. He's got a deep voice or get a white app or a white sound as well as the vent hood in your bathroom or your kitchen. These are great deep sounds that are steady and may calm them down. So those are the, now these are the first three we talked about. You're on swaddled, side, stomach, or skin to skin is the second S. The third S is the shush sound. So the fourth S is swaying back and forth, which we talked about. You can do it in a recliner, you can do it in their swing, you can actually sway them back and forth. The bobblehead motion, that will help calm them down. And the fifth one, which we probably already do, is to suck. So if you are absolutely opposed to pacifiers, I understand, I get that. Give them a breast to suck on or give them, wash your hand and put your pinky in their mouth. Let them suck on something, let them calm down. If all of these are not working, there might be something else going on. So this is, the five S's is after you fed them, you bathed them, you changed them, you have burped them, and they're just not sleeping, this is the trick that I would bring out. Okay guys, so this is my other trick when you're trying to help them go to sleep and those things aren't working. I call it my bobblehead motion and I did show that on the video. I put them on their side and I just do a little bobblehead motion, swaying back and forth. I'm never bending my wrist or my hands and I'm just like swaying them back and forth. Now I would do this for maybe a couple of minutes but that is it because they'll get used to it and they'll want it all the time. This is just to calm them down to help them go to sleep. So once they have done this, I will go ahead back into the room with their bassinet and I would lay them on their side. Now of course this is a little make believe blanket area. I would never use a fuzzy blanket but I would put them on their side and put the bulb syringe right here to kind of calm them down. The reason why I put them on their side, if you lay them right on their back, as soon as they go to sleep, they have that startle reflex, which I'm sure you've already seen if you already put your babies down and then, you, then they'll wake up and you've got to do this all over again. So if you can lay them down on your side, because remember they can do tummy time or side time as long as you awake. So I put them on the other side for a minute, let them get used to that, and then go get you, like I said, a blanket or a thin t-shirt, anything that smells like you roll it up. You can even put it in the dryer to get it warm so that they think it's you. And you could just kind of tuck it around them or actually put it inside so it makes like a dome shape. This is supposed to be propped up a little bit just to help with reflux and if they are have indigestion or gassy, I would tilt the bed up. And I would roll this around to kind of keep them fitted away from their heads, of course. And then in a few minutes when you know they're good and asleep, then I would just roll them to their back and then I would take this away. So this is, you are in the room with them and you're watching them you know it's nothing around their face. So when they are sleeping back is best, there is no hats on them, there's no mittens on them, there is no pacifier with any strings or ribbons or stuffed animals around them, and there's no extra blankets. There's just one fitted swaddle blanket or one fitted, fitted swaddle. And that is it. I tilt them up a little bit and I put them on their back. That's where they're gonna have to learn so they have the start reflex. So guys, I hope this helps. 
I know it's a quick, the five S's and how to calm a crying baby, but I've learned this about nine, 10 years ago when I was an educator. We watched the Dr. Karp's video and it has helped me help many other people. So that's the reason why I decided to do a video today and add to my video from the hospital. I would love to hear from you. Any comments or any suggestions, anything you want me to do or not do, I'm here for you. I believe in you moms and dads. And you do what's best for you. I always say this and that you've got this. Good luck and until then, I will see you next time. Thanks and y'all have a great day. Thank you.